Today we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on Monday, December 19, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos. Also, check out our perks and join the High Stakes membership. Joining the High Stakes membership is easy, is cheap, but it will help a lot in the growth process of this channel. Plus if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. One more thing before we start, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions, you will find the link in the description and comment section below. And make sure to watch our videos till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. Dallas Mavericks vs Minnesota Timberwolves. The Mavericks took the court against the Cavaliers and went home with a loss by a final score of 199 in their last contest. In regard to fouls, the Mavericks ended up walking away with 20, and the Cavaliers totaled 24 fouls. They buried 7 of 36 shots from beyond the perimeter. Cleveland ended up going 59.1% from the free throw line by making 13 of 22 attempts. Additionally, Cleveland grabbed 51 rebounds, 9 offensive, 42 defensive, and added 6 blocked shots. Cleveland recorded 23 dimes and had 6 steals for the game. Pertaining to defense, Dallas allowed the other team to go 42.6% from the field on 40 out of 94 shooting. They also distributed 19 assists in the matchup, as well as forcing the other team into 10 turnovers and having 5 steals. In relation to pulling down rebounds, they compiled 45 with 5 of them being of the offensive variety. From the charity stripe, the Mavericks buried 12 of their 19 tries for a percentage of 63.2%. Dallas finished the game having earned a 40.9% FG percentage, 36 out of 88, and converted 15 out of their 49 three-point attempts. First Minnesota is on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, where they scored 150 points in the first game. Even though both games are at home, that's going to drain your energy. Second, the Dallas offense is well equipped to take advantage of the Timberwolves' biggest weakness, defending the three. The Mavericks take and make the third most threes in the league, and Minnesota is one of the five worst defenses against it. In addition, it's still not 100% confirmed that D'Angelo Russell will be playing, and Rudy Gobert is still out as well. Luka Doncic is still day-to-day, -to -day, but I think the Dallas can cover even without him, as it's a great stylistic matchup in their favor. I've got them covering the minus 4. Our first pick is to take Dallas Mavericks minus 4 points. This is a battle between completely stylistically opposed teams. The Timberwolves are the second fastest team in the NBA, according to Hollinger's team statistics. The Mavericks play like the second slowest squad in that same metric. Adding to it, the OU has gone 18 12ths for Dallas and 12 17 for Minnesota. In this scenario, I'm betting that the Timberwolves aren't going to shoot like the best team in the world two nights in a row. I've already predicted more offensive success for the Mavericks, and they like to take it slow and steady. I don't see the total reaching 227.5 points. Our second pick under 227.5 points. San Antonio Spurs vs Houston Rockets. The Spurs faced the Heat and took a loss by a final of 111-101 in their last game. In the matter of fouls, the Spurs left the arena with 19, and the Heat accumulated 27 fouls. They also knocked down 11 of their 30 shots from beyond the perimeter. Miami walked away from this one shooting 69.6% .6 when shooting free throws by converting 16 of their 23 attempts. Additionally, Miami pulled down 40 rebounds, 8 offensive, 32 defensive, and added 3 rejections. Miami distributed 25 dimes and had 14 steals in the game. In the matter of defense, San Antonio allowed their opponent to shoot 51.2% from the field on 42 of 82 shooting. 
They also distributed 29 assists in this contest, in addition to forcing the other team into 12 turnovers and earning 8 steals. When talking about grabbing boards, they compiled a total of 38 with 7 of them being offensive. From the charity stripe, the Spurs converted 25 of 33 tries for a rate of 75.8%. San Antonio wrapped up the game having earned a 42.9% field goal percentage, 33 of 77, and made 10 of their 27 three-point shots. San Antonio enters this contest with a win-loss mark of 9 to 20 on the year. They are averaging 109.9 PTS per game, 26th in the NBA, while connecting on 46.2% from the field. The Spurs are connecting on 34.1% on three-pointers, 329 of 965, and 72.5% from the free-throw line. As a unit, San Antonio is grabbing 42.4 rebounds per contest and is sitting with 793 assists so far this season, which ranks sixth in the league in terms of passing the ball. They cough up possession 16.1 times per game and as a team are committing 19.7 personal fouls per contest. On defense, the Spurs are forcing 15.0 turnovers on a nightly basis, and they draw 18.9 personal fouls. They give up 39.3% on three-point shots, and they are 30th in the NBA in PPG allowed, 120.0. The Spurs' defense is giving up a field goal percentage of 50.8%, 1,309 of 2,579, and they relinquish 43.6 rebounds per game as a team. They rank 29th in basketball in giving up assists, with 792 conceded so far this year. San Antonio and Houston reached this game on Monday with identical 9-20 records and are tied for last in the Southwest Division. Houston has played better defensively than San Antonio. The Rockets are allowing an average of 115.1 points per game and 47.3% shooting, while at the same time, San Antonio is allowing an average of 120.0 points per game and 50.8% field goal shooting. The Spurs have failed to cover the spread in each of the last two and seven of the last ten, while Houston is a respectable 3-2-1 at TS over the last six games played. San Antonio has two of its guards questionable for Monday, including Josh Richardson and Romeo Langford, while the Rockets are relatively healthy, with just Jason Tate out. Houston has covered the spread in six of the last eight played on its home court. Our first pick is Houston Rockets minus 3.5 points. When they last played, the Rockets took a defeat with a final score of 107-95 when they faced the Trailblazers. In relation to attacking the glass, Houston allowed Portland to grab 36 in total, 10 on the offensive glass. They shot 36.1% from beyond the arc by going 13 out of 36 and ended up shooting 14 of 19 at the charity stripe, 73.7%. The Rockets permitted the Trailblazers to knock down 40 of 85 tries from the floor, which left them with a rate of 47.1% in the game. When the game finished, the Rockets finished 36 for 90 from the floor, which gave them a rate of 40.0%. In the matter of three-point attempts, Houston made three of 29 tries, 10.3%. They were able to knock down 20 of the free throws for a clip of 69.0%. The Trailblazers were called for 20 personal fouls for the contest, which got the Rockets to the free throw line for a total of 29 attempts. They gave up possession of the ball 15 times, while recording 7 steals in this game. The Rockets nagged 33 defensive rebounds and 18 offensive boards for a total of 51 for this game. Both defenses are below average, but both offenses are also below average. The total has finished under in 12 of the last 18 games between San Antonio and Houston, and the total has also finished under in 15 of the last 20 games that San Antonio has played on the road against Houston. The total has also finished under in 6 of the last 9 games that San Antonio has played on the road. Our second pick is under 228.5 points. Charlotte Hornets vs Sacramento Kings the Hornets played the Hawks and took a loss by a final of 125-106 in their last game. Charlotte walked away from the game with a 39.8% field goal percentage, 39 out of 98, and made 15 out of their 43 shots from three-point land. At the free throw line, the Hornets knocked down 13 of 19 tries for a percentage of 68.4%. With regard to grabbing rebounds, they earned a total of 43, with 15 of them being offensive. 
They also doled out 26 assists in this game, in addition to forcing the opposition into 12 turnovers and having 8 steals. Regarding defending, Charlotte allowed their opponent to shoot 54.7% from the field on 41 out of 75 shooting. Atlanta doled out 25 dimes and had 3 steals for this contest. In addition, Atlanta snagged 41 boards, 4 offensive, 37 defensive, and had 5 blocked shots. Atlanta shot 82.4% when shooting free throws by making 28 of 34 attempts. They knocked down 15 of their 29 attempts from downtown. Regarding fouls, the Hornets finished with 25, and the Hawks finished the game with 22 fouls. Getting LaMelo Ball back from injury is exactly what the Charlotte Hornets need right now. Ball is averaging 25 points and 7 assists in the three games since returning, but his team is unable to end the losing streak, which has now reached eight games in a row. Last night they fell on the road at Denver 119-115, despite 31 points from LaMelo. With six defeats in a row on the road they head to Sacramento, where they'll be 9.5 point underdogs. The Kings won the earlier meeting on Charlotte's home court, so it'll be interesting to see how the Hornets respond here. Terry Rozier left last night's game with a hip injury, while Dennis Smith Jr. and Mark Williams are both questionable with ankle injuries. The Kings didn't play last night, they'll be playing their first home game following a six-game road trip. My only worry for them in tonight's game is will they respond well to playing in front of the home fans after being away for so long, teams sometimes tend to come out flat in these situations. At 8-1 Sue in their last nine at Golden 1 Center, they are one of the stronger home teams in the NBA lately, and they could also get Alex Len and Davian Mitchell back from injuries. When playing as the favorite, Sacramento has gone 7-1 at TS over their last eight such games. A clean injury report, better head-to-head -head record, more rest and overall form everything is on the side of the Kings here. They are 8-4 at TS in home games this season and 18-10 overall on the year. Back them to get the job done against Charlotte as well. Our first pick is Kings minus 9 points. The last time they took the court, the Kings got the win with a final of 122-113 against the Pistons. Concerning rebounding, Sacramento allowed Detroit to pull down 46 overall, 14 offensive. They went 34.5% from beyond the perimeter by shooting 10 of 29 and ended up shooting 25 of 31 from the free throw line, 80.6%. The Kings allowed the Pistons to bury 39 out of their 85 attempts from the field, which gave them a percentage of 45.9% in this matchup. When all was said and done, the Kings finished the game shooting 43 for 82 from the field, which had them sitting at 52.4%. In terms of shooting from beyond the arc, Sacramento made 12 of their 31 attempts, 38.7%. They were able to bury 24 of them for a clip of 82.8%. The Pistons were called for 26 fouls in this contest, which got the Kings to the charity stripe for a total of 29 attempts. They also coughed it up 13 times while getting 8 steals for this contest. The Kings were able to snag 29 defensive rebounds and 4 offensive rebounds, totaling 33 for the matchup. Getting LaMelo hasn't fixed any of the defensive issues the Hornets have this season. Opponents have scored 125, 141, 131, 121, and 122 points against them in the last five games, and the high-flying Kings are aiming to go over 120 tonight as well. They've done so in two games in a row at Toronto and Detroit, when playing at home they have the third fastest pace in the entire NBA, with an average of 102.7 possessions per game. Charlotte also ranks high, 10th, in pace when playing on the road, with an average of 100.9 possessions per game. The three most recent meetings have produced a 2-1 record on the over and under, with an average of 240 points scored. I can't see a ton of defense being played in tonight's game, so let's back the over despite the big projected total. Our second pick is over 239.5 points. 